We are back with the Hubscale podcast, where we dive into the minds of security leaders all around the world. This week, we have the co-founder and CEO of Gitpol, Tal Colander. She founded the vendor over five years ago and has taken a very uncommon approach in the world of security. Really, really excited to dive into some of these topics today. Tal, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. (laughs) <laughs> no problem. So I guess anybody who doesn't know Tal, uh, could you please give a quick introduction? Sure. So um, my name is Tal Colander and uh, let's say um, it will be August, six years ago when I first started Gitpol. But well, um, a bit before then, um, I would say that um, I was kind of a computer hacker when I was very young. I don't know if you know what uh, I don't know if hacker was uh, really uh, something that people knew how to say it um, or what it is. But uh, yeah, I started, um, uh, well, I can say like whew, 20 years ago to, um, uh, to let's say, to do my own style with computers, um, but um, without the glasses. I, um, I was the real thing back then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. super interesting, super interesting. And just tell, take me back to the early days and obviously being uh, being really into uh, kind of hacking before maybe it was even cool or even known. Uh, just take me back to those days. So when when I start, let's say, so Gitball today is pretty much everything that um, if I take back uh, for my early stage um, hacking skills to the... Um, to be able to um, to do things on my own, to write my own code and my own, let's say, uh, my own hacking uh, software. And um, at the age of 18, as everyone knows, uh, in Israel, um, we must join the army. So I joined the army and um, and the army f- uh, first took me to the to being like a fighter pilot. That's what I wanted. wanted. And then um, after... Um, after some time, uh, I continued to the to some computer units, and and people I'm pretty sure are aware of like um, RAM 8200 and and maybe uh, some other um, some other names, a popular name uh, names in the industry. So with time, um, the army pretty much taught me how to take my black hat skills to uh, be like a white hat skills, and instead of helping my friends and my family, my friend and uh, myself. Uh, they told me, oh, John, I mean, just start helping your, your country. So I said, okay, I will um, I will do it. I love my country. Let's do it. And um, and those skills um, taught me with time how to take it um, to the next level, next level of helping organizations instead of, um, well, um, instead of helping my, my only, my, my packet. Um, and, <laughs> and after a very nice journey in the army, I continue in uh, in the defense forces, but also the finance. And um, again, back then, um, cyber wasn't really like a thing. So back then, it was IT and security, and it was combined together. And after um, a few years, then the cyber world and the shining and the whole of the halos, um, halo around the the, the cyber uh, came out. And and with time, I um, I was assigned to be. In um in the top teams um among again many uh, many places and then again in, in in order to help uh, the organizations and and and, and these and um the, I finished at Dell EMC right before Gitpol and the Dell Dell EMC I was assigned in the Ministry of Defense um to be part of again of a great team that uh. Uh, will do all of the things from the system, um, cyber, and do many things on our own. And six years ago, um, I had I had to deal with the big, big, big thing, and I needed to write everything on my own again. But it was way too big than writing like regular things that today everyone knows as pen test of vulnerabilities. But um, there was an issue that even Microsoft couldn't address it and uh, other vendors in the market that they reached out to. And I just said, I mean, I went to a pub with uh, one of my best friends. His name is Tal as well. And I told him, listen, I have this idea after a few, um, after a few draft beers. Um, it came out on a piece of napkin. And, um, and it came out in such a great way because 
Today, I do think that Gitpol is, uh, we are kind of an, an empire in, in terms of who we are and what we are. Um, and the, 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 the reason why Gitpol was created is um, to finally skip the overhead of manual procedures and helping the organizations in the world just to do the right thing without finally an impact. So finally, you know everything before you go. That's our approach. And by addressing actually the uh, main pain of today's world, that is device misconfigurations. Yeah, no, it's a super cool journey. And obviously, every entrepreneur that comes on this podcast, or I have a conversation with, I always like to dive into multiple topics. But I think one of the coolest things um, that we're going to talk about today is the actual journey of Gitpol itself, which I'm sure we'll get to in a moment. But I want to dive into a couple of things as well, uh, Tal. Uh, we, we've been speaking before the podcast, and it sounds like you've been nominated for a few awards. I'd love to I'd love to hear more about that as well. Yeah, thank you. I mean, so... Um... It happened like a month ago, even less, that I just got an email saying, oh, you are nominated to um, um, cybersecurity um, women of the year. Um, and then, hmm, okay, it's like lots of, uh, and I'm, I was pretty sure that, oh, there were probably like tons of women over there. I'm not, I mean, okay, whatever. And then I saw that actually I'm in the top three of my category, which is, um uh, uh, the innovation and everything. And I was super excited to see it. And today I just got an email that I'm also nominated to the um, to the world, um, uh, like to among all of the categories and all of the women over there, there is only one woman that will get the, the award of cybersecurity woman of the year without, let's say any, any subcategory. So I was so happy to see it and I was so, um, um, again, I mean, delighted because usually when you see something like that, you say, yeah, I mean, uh, it probably there are so many nominations, so many competitions, so why me? Um, or another another thing. And, and no, apparently this is something very, very big, very huge that, um, um, that now, yeah, I mean, um, I am very happy because the journey that Gitpol, um, that Gitpol pretty much created and everything that we've been through from being... Um, a cybersecurity startup with, again, I'm one of the, as you mentioned, co-founder and the CEO, and we decided not to take any money and we are profitable and we have hundreds of customers and we are growing every week. That is something that I'm pretty sure um, that even, even companies that raised hundreds of millions of dollars, they never imagined to be in, in, in this stage. And, and let's say even with the money that they have. So it is, I mean... I thank uh, I thank God and whoever else who, who, who has part of it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations. It's a it's a huge huge achievement and uh, testaments to everything that you've been doing throughout your career and built with uh, built with Gitpol as well. Um. So I guess you so you mentioned something there, bootstrapping the company. Now, as I mentioned, kind of in the intro, um, everybody takes money in security, right? <laughs> so I'd love to hear um what tell just tell me about that that journey that you've been on. So when I, again, when I, going back to the age of uh, uh, 15, yes, yes, I will be 35 soon. So when I go back to the, to the age of 15, one of the things that, uh, uh, that I learned is how to, how to become um, the female version of Robin Hood, maybe. I mean, if we can say that. Um, so um, I used to I used to uh, develop my own techniques and my own ways to be uh, to be ranked number one in some games because there were many many cheaters and when I found out that uh, someone took the award for me back then and um, I said no not anymore and uh, and then I just I won so many uh, prizes and things that are. Uh, I mean, we're so hard to achieve back then because, oh, it cost us so much money to get it. And then you can you can get it pretty much for free, but you just need to um, to be number one, to be ranked number one. Um, and then, okay, I'll just be there. And then I was number one every day on the same game because or on several games because every day there is a winner. So I just won um, every day. And then I just got the same the same thing every day. So I didn't have nothing. I mean, I didn't need to use more than one uh, one award, let's say, because it's more of the same. I just 
um, gave it away to my friends. And that's what happened actually. And that's why I'm I'm super happy that um that this journey and everything that I did my in my again in my own hands taught me how to do my own hands today, like 10 fingers um um together with Gilad and Yaakov, and this is the git of the git poll. And um because Gilad and Yaakov are um, pretty much like secondary in terms of because they already made their own exit um, um, uh, back in 2011. Uh, their company was called Digital Fuel and they were acquired by VMware. Um, and then they said, okay, I want to have another journey. Let's do it this time without raising any money. And I said, oh, let's do it. I mean, I I'm with you, okay? It's not free. It's okay. Let's spend our time. And then we decided not to do it, although we saw a lot of VCs. And it was tempting for me because all of my friends, they took money all the time. And you know, you do what everyone does because oh, it's, it's so obvious. But we decided, I mean, they convinced me to stay as we are because this is the right way. And for them right now, it's the only way that they agree to go. And um, and again, well, maybe we started in a month, six years ago on a piece of napkin, but officially we started May 19, um, after the garage thing, you know, with the first PO. And yeah, it is a great journey having the um, the fact that we do not have um, a non-paying customer. I mean, if, even if it is a beta or an alpha, they pay. Even if someone wants to try another feature and then, oh, you know what, Al, we just take for whatever, like six months or something, you pay for six months. I mean, nothing for free. And they understand it. I mean, the money of our, the culture that we built is that the money of our customers feed, feeds us. And we need it in order. Um, and that is why all of our employees understand it. So everything that we do eventually addresses, I mean, the, 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 the fact or um, everything that we do in, if you look at this like that, I mean, like in effect that what we deliver and what we say, we believe that what the customer is happy, the customer pays, and then we get the salaries on top of it. So that is why it is super important because we appreciate the money even more. Um, it's not only a phrase, the customer is always right. I mean, sometimes the customer is not always right. I mean, and, and people need to understand it. I mean, sometimes, yeah, sometimes we argue with customers that, hey, I mean, it is not us, it's another thing, but we help them. But we need to understand it again, in order to make um, uh, the, the balance right and in order to, to, to appreciate and to understand and to have the perception of, um, okay, money buys everything, but not, I mean, we need to owe, we need to owe it. We need to make sure that we really deserve to be in, the, in this spot. So that is why I do think it is very important, um, this culture of, oh, we have a customer, let's appreciate it, let's create the stickiness, let's make um, the customer buy uh, buy for um, more um, more more ears or more devices or again whatever that we do, um, in order to uh, in order to make him happy. And again, we are happy, he is happy. I mean, and that's it. Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a super interesting journey. I remember going through this before the podcast, um, kind of about that kind of uh, the customer journey, the building the culture, which I'm sure we'll go into today. But I just want to stay on the bootstrapping part a little bit, because that's um, a really, really interesting thing to do, especially in security. And you're right, you see everybody taking taking money, your friends and everybody in the Israeli ecosystem, and you, you've, not, you've chosen not to follow that route. So I'd love to understand what's your biggest learnings out of that kind of journey as well. Well, it's a good question because when you when you are a startup, everyone tells you, you know, think clean, think clean, but they don't really think clean because they just raise like 20 R&D salespeople, which when they do not have a product, but they, they hire salespeople, okay, just to sell air or like uh, some promises. And um, they no one really thinks lean. But in Gitpool, we, when we have, let's say, um, some money, um, so we know how to make this money um, also like profitable for the company, meaning, okay, we are a profitable a, a company or we are, again, it, and it is it is very, very successful, Gitpol. But when we have some um, extra budget, then we hire more people. When we have some bottlenecks, we know what to do with them. So when we have a bottleneck with, um, right now we just hired five new people from sales engineer, director of marketing, director of operations, more sales um, in the US. 
and, and R&D. Um, and again, everywhere we see that there is um, something that, um, that we need, we absolutely, um, we want to make sure that, hey, I can pay them for the next 18 months, I can hire them. It's not that they just think like 20 steps ahead, oh no, we need like at least 20 people in the US, we need 10 people in the UK, we need, um, like, no. We absolutely think by the need. We have a huge pipe right now on the Monday that we are dealing. Okay, so maybe we need more uh, more people to hire, I don't know, like in the US or in the UK because of the huge pipe, or do we need more R&D because we do have like backup uh, backlog in the product? It really depends. And that is why thinking as a bootstrap, um, you know exactly how to appreciate everything that, as you, uh, that you do from the code that you write, that you are not going to draw your code and you are not going to write like 10 tests of something um, to the time that you manage. And even if you have an extra time, every single one of our employees, it's not that they do whatever they, oh, you are backend, so you do only backend. No, we give them, we give them the, the opportunity to think, oh, you can do also, you know, you can even design and have, you know, the small thing here is missing and I think that you can, fit here very, very well, go and challenge yourself because we want them to be way more than regular or like way more than like, you know, enterprise or, or even other startups that you do usually what you what you are hired to do. And in Deepal, we just, um, le- we teach them how to think out of the box and how to always be creative, how to think even um, even if they are, um, like again, like one of the employees, but again, it's so important because they think like an entrepreneur. And um, it's not that I am, um, let's say, I'm not, I'm not, oh, Tal is the CEO. I don't care about titles. I mean, all I care about is that people eventually will deliver and that people will be happy. Because if we do not have this joy and happiness in the, in the culture and in the company, I don't like it. I mean, no one will like it. I mean, people are not coming for because of the money. The money is not the big thing. The the the, the roadmap, the um what the the role, everything that they do, the the team, um, and then also the money. But we want people to um uh, to have fun, because otherwise, uh, it doesn't worth it. And yeah, culture wise is very important in bootstrap to make sure that we are always unique, that we are always in touch with each other, that we communicate, that there is no, you know, like someone doesn't like someone. It doesn't happen in, in Gitpol because we will never let this happen. So it's very important to, again, keep it lean, but un- very, very united, very, uh, very unique and very uh, close. Yeah, no, I I think it's honestly phenomenal. I think the journey that you you and the co-founders and the whole team um they're building something really unique and special, Tal. And you you mentioned culture a few times there, um, and that was one of the things I wanted to run through today because when we were talking before that that kind of drive that you need as a company, um, especially being bootstrapped, the culture is ever so more important. So just tell me about how how have you built that number one, and and what is the kind of the key things you'd kind of give to the listeners who are maybe building a company as well to to kind of give some advice. So first, again, it's not, um, as, as I mentioned, it's not, oh, Tal is the CEO. I mean, do not go through, her. no. Everything, the communication goes through me, of course, not the micromanagement, but it's like things that, I mean, yeah, I people reach out to me all the time because that's what we agreed on, because that's the culture that we built. Plus, we pretty much have like kind of flat organization. So it's not that um, we have lots of management and uh, like um, tiering and, you know, bureaucracy. Um, and we are trying to keep it very um, uh, neat and again also very nice so um, the communication will work. Um, again, we are trying to resolve or address any bottleneck we let our in, in uh, part of our culture is to let our employees to be entrepreneurs. If they have some ideas, if they know how to do something sometimes you know uh, before we had Monday, okay before we had any CRM and before we even had the Jira um, so um, People from, from Gitpol, you know, they just said, oh, Tal, we need something. Okay, you need something? Do it. I mean, I mean, it's your project. Think about, like, the tool. Just please take some tools, okay? Take some um, a software, test them out, and then show us the conclusion, and we will choose, of course. But we absolutely give them the freedom to do whatever they want, um, because if it makes sense, 
try. It's, it's like, it's not something even again, as part of the role, um, or as part of the role and a part, a part of their title, because it's something that I really want to give them the opportunity to think out of the box, to be creative, um, innovative, and um, to, to, to have the best communication with other uh, with others in the company. So today, even the, the sales team, they communicate with the R&D, of course, if um, the, 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 let's say the, the right thing, it's not that they will tell them, oh, you need to develop this, no, but it's like, it's a very open discussion. Obviously, all of the tasks and the, the, the projects that they need to do is a different, a different thing, but it's an open communication. Um, and we do, um, we are trying to have as many, you know, like events as possible together, um, even from the people, um, even with the people from other countries um, that work for Gitpol. Um, and we are trying all the time to be creative and innovative. Um, and that's the culture that we are trying um, to have among our employees. I mean, absolutely um, think like R&D in Gitpol, the developers, they do R and D. I mean, research and development. It's not that they just, um, oh yeah, this is the task. This is what I need to do. I do it. No, go investigate everything. Show me. Let's see. Let's review it. And then if it makes sense, go develop it. I mean, but um, in the, 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 the whole thing about culture is so unique because um, I don't want to have the micromanagement in Gitpol. That is very bad because we are small. We are 20 plus employees, but we are very small. And to have the ability of scaling fast, the micromanagement is very bad. So this is why we absolutely hire and again, many many people from our sales and support, and uh, they are um, they used to be our customers first. So that's another thing. They said, "Oh, I mean, I love Gitpol. Let's move from the customer side to the vendor side because I love your message. I love what you do, and I believe in it. That's the most important part." So yeah, that's another thing that um, uh, that is important. So yeah, sorry that mixing between. Uh, no, two no. parties, but it's like uh... <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it's uh, I think it's brilliant because one thing, uh, especially in the startup world, um, having that autonomy uh, to make them decisions within an organization is kind of critical to the the company's success. I think uh, you, you hear horror stories about micromanagement and uh, all that type of stuff that that kind of really can be detrimental to an organization, right? But it sounds like you've kind of cracked everything, Tal, and it's uh, again a super exciting kind of journey that's going on. <laughs> Thank you. I still, I still, I still learn every day. I learn, I learn new things. Believe me, it's like, um, well, um, I have to share something that happened to us. I mean, without um, saying names, but um, yesterday we just got very two, um, two approvals for, with again the two largest customers or one of let's say two major, major, major accounts in the U.S. They they agree to go to a POC, and people need to understand that in order to get them. Um, in order to onboard them, in order to make it work to a POC, and again, I'm talking about names that everyone knows and they are huge and massive, is that you need to know, and again, it's a tip, it's a great tip, but you need to have a champion. You need to get a champion internally in, in one of the organ in every organization in order to make yourself a way to a win. And again, you take the full win and the big win, you see the light, but before the PO, which is the main light, you cut it into small pieces because that's your only way to have a very, very, very nice or a, a success uh, with this customer. And I'm talking about customers with, whoa, like um, hundreds of thousands of devices plus, okay? So um, we need to have the quick wins with them because that's our only way that we can um uh, that we can that we can make it it's not only you know like um um customers with i don't know 500 devices uh, devices and small customers are, they act different than large customers and this is why the process is longer and this is why when you want to talk to people you need to do, you need to know how to do it and with whom and that is why a champion is your key to success within those organizations and again teamwork all the time Teamwork, and if, even if you have reseller, it's okay to involve him, but you need to have a direct point of contact in the customer. That's the way it works. Okay, and maybe it's a tip for me. The resellers are great, but again, you need them to allow you to contact the specific account or accounts, um, uh, because if you want to be very successful. Yeah, I I love uh, 
talk on champions within an organization is is rife across sales, right? No matter what kind of business you're in, you need that person who's going to be that internal champion for you to push things when you're not in the room. <laughs> so uh, exactly. I, I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So just tell me on, on Git Paul then, where, where do you want to take it? Oh, it's a tough question that uh, everyone, I mean, everyone that asks me that, everyone who asks me that, um, um, I, it's like, Startups, they have, well, two ways to go and they are not parallel. They are pretty much like that. It's either you grow or either you go to get acquired, okay? It's like, it's, there is, you cannot do it both. I mean, you just can't. Um, and currently, we are absolutely growing, okay? Um, but I can tell you that there were some um, times when a startup was focusing in growing and then he got an offer that, well, it was very, very hard to say no. So if I if I will get an offer that uh, I won't be able to say no, I mean, when I say me, like Gilad, Yaakov, and myself, then we won't say no. But it's very important for us um, uh, to to make sure that all of our employees will, 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 will get and will see and will see the benefit from it, okay? It's not only what's good for Gilad, Yaakov, and Tal, and again, it's what's good culture-wise for everyone. Because that is why it is very important for us to um, not to be like a snob or something, but to um, to see um, not only what's in it for us, but uh, what's in it for. And when I say us, I, I look at the bigger picture. And us, it means all of Gitpol employees. Yeah, no, no, it's a super exciting journey, and I can't wait to to stay on the sidelines and and watch this kind of grow as well, uh, Tal, which is which is super cool. But I guess in terms of um, I just want to ask one more question about the VC side and, and the cash side of the business, because I think in when you look at everything holistically, you've said no to VC. I can't, can't even imagine how many how many times. But what's it actually like saying no? And and how can you just stick to your guns and drive forward on, on, on the way that you've been doing it? So for VCs, um, I've learned that, let's say that I learned that today you do not say no, you say not now. But okay. I can tell you that if I if I started Gitpol from the beginning today, I would definitely take money. Okay, today I would definitely take money um, because I see where it helps. Okay, um, um, but I don't know. Like, um, if we're talking about like today in our state, we do not need this is money just yet. Um, again and again, never say never. But what I can tell you is that. I don't know, maybe my next startup, um, I, won't, will ne- I will not hesitate to reach out to them and, uh, um, and to ask for money. I, I am in contact with, with lots of VCs. Um, they know our status. Um, and again, I mean, they keep chasing uh, in a good way after us, like uh, once a quarter, once in, um, in six months, um, just to, you know, just to, to, to see where we are um, and, to, you know, like to check our pulse. And um and to see if something has been changed um and and that's the main thing why we do need them in the loop because I can also by the way I did also introdu- introductions between the VCs and other startups and it is also good it is again it's also good um uh, to them and uh, but they know that remember that VC it's good to invest it's and it's it's amazing to invest to invest in a great product. But when you invest in a great product, you first want to uh, find the, the right team, the team that that can definitely make the, the the huge success in the world, like the next big thing and the next gen of whatever. That's what they want to see. The next Mark Zuckerberg, the next um, okay, the next Google, the next whatever. They want to see it. Um, and I do believe that part of um, our culture and part of um, and I am maybe my passion. Um, it drives them, I mean, to, you know, this is what motivates them, like, to keep chasing after us, and not only the numbers, but it's like, I do see, I do think that my enthusiasm, and I, I mix with the world, but it's like, my passion and my energy definitely, um, definitely a, a, a work and make them, and again, and everyone, again, it's, it's not a lie, but they do believe that there is something huge in here, and again, the, pro- the proof is in the pudding, yeah, eventually, I mean, if we weren't profitable, if we weren't like um, having like every year um, uh, like exponential scale and, and customers like year after year, year after year, like um, um, we 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 just get more and more. Um, so yeah, I mean, people are finally 
hear more about Gitpod and about what we do. And um, they they also take it, and and that's the most amazing gift that uh, that we could imagine. Yeah, I think it's super exciting, honestly. And I think everything we've gone through today uh, is just a real testament to yourself from the awards to building the business, from everything along those lines, Tal. So uh, really, really insightful conversation. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show and super excited to see where Gitpol goes over the next few years. Thank you so much, Elliot. I will definitely keep you posted. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> you very much. See you soon.